girl, I know you think it's a game, but it is absolutely not, okay? This is the energy supplement from Just Move Supplements. That's right. It's damn near all gone, girl. And that's because I had to get that energy up so I could complete the workout. So I could give y'all this body, this transformation, get into it, okay? And I'm done working out now. So that's why we're moving on to the protein shake. Oh, yes. It's already in there, girl. It's already made right here. This is the mixture of the banana pudding, the chocolate cake, and the buttercream cupcake. And you really want to be fancy, you can go ahead and add that blueberry muffin if that's what you want to do, girl. But for me, it's these three right here, okay? You put that with some almond milk, you mix it all up in honey, okay? Your muscles have gained life, new energy, agility. Get into it, okay? Just move supplements. Thank you very much. Hold up, Chief. Okay, don't forget about that TLC Nutri Burst to get that multivitamin product because we all need a little extra. And child, if you want that sea moss, that go down smooth, don't come up rough. Okay, get into the TLC Nautica sea moss. Yes, get that from me. And child, if your stomach hurt and you need to move some things around so you can be free, okay, go ahead and get that ISO T down below in the description box. Get it all from me. what's up okay listen i hope everybody's having a good day i hope you're having a good day and if the day isn't so great i hope i make you feel a little bit better that that is the goal okay that is the goal girl before we get into today's topics and we're going to talk about a few things today okay we're going to talk about a few things girl let me tell you what we're talking about um we're going to talk about zendaya eva has finally spoken about her weight loss. We're going to get into that. B. Simone seems to be coming out with a new project and shading her former BFF at the same damn time. We're going to look into that. DDG speaks on Ruby Rose drama, and there are rumblings that DDG and Haley have broken up. I hope not. There's a sweet little baby involved. There's also been a gathering of J-Lo happening on the internet that I find hilarious. Hilarious. Do you hear me? Okay. Um, I'm still not over the one where they make fun of her like in a, in a video. You know what I'm saying? It reminds me how my hair used to be back in the day when I'm like Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. And then somebody was like, bitch, I went to school with you. That's not how your hair was. Here is the photo. <laughs> it's slick. Okay. It's a slick. It's a bouffant. It was straight hair. It was not giving. I was running up and down the block. But maybe you didn't know her then. Maybe you knew her in high school and we're talking about middle school, girl. Like, <laughs> calm down. You don't know that lady life. But that shit was hilarious nonetheless. Do you hear me? <laughs> hilarious. Um, we're also going to talk about OJ passing away and Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner's crass comments. Um, K. Michelle. Um, said something that I've been wanting to talk about with y'all for a minute now because I feel like there's a lot of y'all that feel this way and we need to have a conversation because if you ever want to not have a nigga hitting you upside the head as a way of life, <laughs> come with me. We, we we have to stretch. We have to, girl, <laughs> we, we, we have to stretch, okay, on the insides and up here. Um, Love and Marriage Huntsville released their, I guess, photo for the upcoming season, Destiny's Back. And there's a new couple, girl, <laughs> girl, I don't know what's going on. And finally, we're going to end with a cute little Ray J, okay? And then tomorrow for members only, we're going to talk about JT, Young Miami. We're going to talk about Fresh and Fit. 
um, amongst some other things, more did, diddy stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> diddy bopping all over the place. We're going to talk about some stuff, okay, in the members only that's going to go down tomorrow on Friday. So, <laughs> little update to let y'all know what we're getting into this episode of the Bondi Blue Show, okay? Now, also this evening, hello, ooh, ladies first, ladies first, ooh, ladies first. Ladies first. Listen, I had to give it to y'all right quick. The old ladies first panel is returning tonight on Nisi Dixon's channel. Oh yes, the girls are back in town. We're hitting a stride. Okay, and we're glad to be back. So we'll see y'all tonight. All right. Um, and also your girl, <laughs> okay, your girl has gotten nominated for another award and I'm excited about it. I am being nominated for influencer of the year by the AAMBC awards. Okay. Which is so dope. Um, and this is more like a literary award, like uh, writers and storytellers. And I really appreciate being nominated or being seen as a game changer, a trendsetter. Like, I appreciate that very much so. I really do. And I love what I do. And I feel like being a storyteller and stretching into the Now That We're Grown series um, and, and, you know, beyond this, moving more into lifestyle, like, I just feel like the stretch is happening, girl. <laughs> okay, we're expanding. Okay, we're moving on up. And that's in, like, mental and, like, spiritual and life as a whole going into the 36 of it all, girl. Because y'all know I make 36 next month. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> but, you know, good and old, girl. Good and old. In case y'all just met me, yes, I used to have short blonde hair, girl. Um, congratulations to all of the other nominees. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, y'all can go and vote. All right. Y'all can go and vote for this. This is also something that you can go and vote for. Um, the link is on my Instagram page. Um, if anybody could help me out with that and putting it in the comments, I'd appreciate it. But thank you so much in advance to everybody that's going to vote for me. Um, thank you guys for voting for Boss Babe. YouTuber of the year, which I'm still uh, very excited about. That's happening at the end of the month. And I'm I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm going to be real and be real upset if I win. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be real bad if I, y'all going to see me. It's not going to be, it's going to be, I'm going to be mad and I'm going to show it. Like, <laughs> okay. Um, so make sure y'all vote for me for Boss Babe YouTuber of the year. Okay. Of course, I'm always congratulating whoever wins. It's all, you know, it's just great to be honored to be in the room. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, like be being appreciated for one's gifts and talents. You know what I'm saying? So thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Okay. <laughs> Not the Angela Bassett. Listen, what, what am I pretending for, girl? Who am I pretending for? Whose benefit? Whose benefit? <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the topic, shall we? So I wanted to start here. And the reason why I'm starting here, say what? Company forced to pay 50K to black worker that they fired for wearing her natural hair instead of a wig. The reason why I'm bringing this story up is because not too long ago, maybe last week, I talked to you guys and I think a members only. It might have been a members only, but it was basically a video of people on young black students on LSU's campus. Most of them saying ignorant shit. And it was baffling. It was baffling. Because it's like, I know that campus, college campus. Are we not reading? Is there not a history class? Are we not taking African-American? Are, are, are there no African-American literature classes at LSU anymore? Like, because I know. <laughs> Listen, I know the white people love to push African-American voices out of the curriculum so that you don't get firsthand knowledge of what was actually being experienced. Girl, it's so very, very interesting. I don't know if it made it to the college, the college level here in Louisiana. OK, I, I don't know if that's what's been going on here. 
but it's very annoying to me when I feel like if you are a young black person and you live in America and you don't know certain things about your history, by the time you go to college, there should have been like an understanding. And I remember a young woman saying that, you know, I just want everybody to realize that white girls can wear braids too. Like it's no different than when we wear straight hair, we wear weaves, we wear other people's hair. It's no different, girl. Is it not? Is it not? Is it not? Because I don't see any white girls getting fired for wearing braids. I, I don't I don't see it, girl. <laughs> I don't see any white girls having any issues whatsoever with how they decide to wear their hair on any job. Never heard. Never heard of it. When we talk about cultural appropriation, a lot of y'all are missing it. Y'all are y'all are missing it. Y'all are not connecting. Okay. Black women specifically in this country who are descendants of slavery have a very, very, very specific experience when it comes to our hair, which is why it's such a big deal to us. Please understand that at the very beginning of this, Slave masters and the people that sold the slaves, whatever their <laughs> whatever their station was at the time, shaved the heads of the women so that they would all blend in. Because one of the things that differentiated tribes was hair, hairstyles, ways of braiding, textures of hair. Oh, yes, girl. It was a huge thing in African culture to show your culture through your hair, beads, braiding, all kinds of stuff, right? Slave masters decided it made the women look too exotic, right? Once they got here to the States and they were braiding their hair and doing all kinds of little cute shit on Sunday before they had to go back slaving, right? They made it a law. You can't braid your hair. You can't put beads in your hair. You actually have to have your hair wrapped up, which is where the Aunt Jemima hair wrapping thing comes from. From the fact that it was made illegal, illegal, illegal. This is was this was not something we was talking about or we felt from people. This is something that was literally put in somebody's law book that a black woman had to cover her hair. As to not tempt the slave masters to see them as women and therefore not want to see them as cattle. Okay. Okay. And now here in 2020, 2024, it's 2024. Okay. Right. That's the year. Uh huh. We have something that goes back to 2018. Neighbors, check this out. In late October 2018, a black woman's employer had the audacity to fire her after she stopped wearing a wig to work and started wearing her natural curly hair. Amani Jackson claims her employer stated that she came in with beautiful hair, but now looks like she rolls out of bed. A federal lawsuit filed by the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission says Jackson, who is black, was hired as a sales associate for American Screening LLC, a drug and medical testing company in Louisiana. During the interview for the first month of work, she donned a wig with straight hair that took 45 minutes to put on and was uncomfortable, according to the complaints. Then she began wearing her hair in its natural state, usually in a neat bun. The company owner said Jackson, her hair was unacceptable and instructed her to wear straight hair, that is, the wig. The company owner decided to fire Jackson in late October 2018, about two months after she was hired and replaced her with a white employee, according to the complaint, which accused American screening of race discrimination. So do you see why DEI is necessary? Yes, this probably was not a good work environment, but a lot of us care more about being able to eat and pay our rent than we do about getting along with the people that we work for. Just saying. According to a consent decree entered on April 3rd in the United States District Court of the Western District of Louisiana, American Screening has agreed to pay Jackson $50,000 in monetary relief to settle the lawsuit nearly two years after the claim was filed. In all honesty, they, they should have paid her more. 
This to me, she should have been paid probably closer to, I would say 150. I would say $150,000. Okay. Because two years, really, you should be paying me how much I would have made working for you for two years. You should be paying me that on top of my attorney's fees. And I should get a little extra on top of the fact because that was embarrassing and fucked up and traumatic for you to put that black lady through. You racist some of a. Unfortunately, this form of discrimination continues to limit employment opportunities for black workers. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Is it? No one should be terminated or treated differently because of hair texture associated with their race under the guise of what is supposedly professional or not. Elizabeth Owen an EEOC senior trial attorney who led the case said in the statement, 50K is not enough. She should have been giving, given more, I would say. However much she was supposed to be making, it should have been, I would aim for 500. Yeah, I would have aimed for 500,000 and let them like, you know, kind of come down to 250 or something like that. But she deserved more than 50. And yes, let's not forget about the Crown Act. Specifically, put into place for situations such as these. But for some reason, there are collegiate level young black women saying shit like white women wearing braids is the same thing as black women wearing wigs. I think the fuck not. It's another extension of why DEI is necessary. The only reason that they have to pay her is because that is in violation of a civil rights act, I'm sure. That's discrimination. If it were not in law that that's considered discrimination, she would not get anything for being fired simply for her hair texture. And they wouldn't have hired her if they did not have to. Only to replace her with a white woman. Do you see how these laws, DEI, all of that stuff is necessary for the everyday person to get a job? I don't need to like these people. It does need to be illegal for them to mistreat me. And I need to be compensated if they decide to cross those boundaries. All of that needs to be in law because you cannot count on people to hire based on someone's merit. You can't count on that. People have biases. Be fucking for real. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. You know, I get passionate about the stuff that actually matters. OK, let's move on. Y'all know what all of the conversation about the Nickelodeon kids and everything. Zendaya. Zendaya spoke about being the breadwinner of her family. And I just wanted to see what she said. And um, I wanted to have some commentary on this topic because I'm starting to feel like it's really bad when y'all make y'all kids become actors and actresses or anything in entertainment. I'm starting to look at the parents way worse than I used to. I used because I always wanted to be in entertainment and I was able to do that on a child level growing up. But extending, I mean, I had done commercials and stuff like that, but extending it beyond that to the point of being the breadwinner for a family, I don't think my dad would have ever allowed that to happen. Just because, you know, the type of man he was, there's no way my child is supporting my family. That's just not how that's going to work. You know what I mean? So when I see these certain situations, you know what I mean? It just kind of makes me look at the parents like, was your whole goal to make your child, like, responsible for you as an adult? Was the whole goal to make your child pay for your life? Like, bitch, I accidentally had you. Now you're going to get out here and work. And listen, historically, children have been made to work. Look it up. Okay, so TV and movie stars Zendaya recently shared some insight on what it was like growing up in the spotlight. The actress spoke about the topic during a recent British Vogue feature where she reflected on the childhood sacrifices she made in favor of acting and how that shaped who she is now as an adult. The 27-year-old was promoting her new film, Challengers, when an interviewer asked her thoughts about child stardom. In response, Zendaya stated, I don't know how much of a choice I had. I have complicated feelings about kids and fame and being in the public eye or being a child actor. We've seen a lot of cases of it being detrimental. I think only now as an adult am I starting to go, oh, okay, wait a minute. 
I've only ever done what I've known, and this is all I've known. As you may know, Zendaya took over the Disney Channel scene in 2010 after being cast on the hit series Shake It Up at just 14 years old. She continued to star in different projects and took her career to a new height when she landed her breakout role of MJ in the 27 blockbuster Spider-Man Homecoming alongside her now beau, Tom Holland. Despite her success, Zendaya went on to state in the interview that there are some typical teenage experiences she wishes she could have had younger. The entertainer said she's currently in her angsty teenage phase because she didn't have time to explore that in the past. She added, I felt like I was thrust into a very adult position. I was becoming the breadwinner of my family very early and there was a lot of role reversal happening and just kind of becoming grown. Y'all. A lot of what she said, like, kind of bothers me, especially considering a quiet on set situation. Um, when she says, I did not have much of a choice, it really, really upsets me. I don't know who Zendaya's parents are. I don't know, you know, because people, you know, oh, I'm great parents. Yeah. At the end of the day, if your daughter, even, even successful, even having money, is looking back on her life like she did not have a choice and her childhood was basically stolen from her. And now as an adult, she's having to go through what she would have went through if you had not made her responsible for you as an adult. That's where my mind goes with that. And I, I feel very sad for the kids that want to do this from a place of excitement and passion and also are being forced into child labor <laughs> for lack of a better term. Like, and, and we know y'all Zendaya is amazing. She's beautiful. She's a great actress. Um, you know, she's doing great work with Euphoria and a lot of other projects that she's been in. I love her and Euphoria because I feel like so often, you know, the pretty biracial looking girl um, plays the pretty biracial looking girl. But to see her play such a grungy role um, and really commit to it in such a way that you feel it through the screen, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's some epic chops to have. And I think that's somebody that takes their craft very seriously. And I don't care how you've been, you know, a, a given opportunity because of how you look. That shows me you are working for what you have. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it also makes me wonder what type of situations she may have gotten put in. Like, yeah, you miss proms you you don't get to build you know real friendships because in the industry i'm sure there's a level of competition amongst child actors for for certain roles especially black women fitting a certain demographic like i'm sure there's a lot that she missed you know it just makes me look at the whole child star situation very differently than i did growing up but i feel like you know for some people it may be worth it because they may have financial freedom but I feel like everybody isn't Zendaya and everybody isn't going to be a Zendaya. So, yeah, y'all, we should really pay attention to those moms and, and dads that really push their children into adult like careers, you know, and it's always like at any time if you want to quit, you like <laughs> y'all always act like children don't understand what's un what's unsaid. Children understand heavily what's unsaid meaning that you can say you can stop whenever you want to stop and the kid will still feel the weight of it's my responsibility if I stop I'm going to stop taking care of everybody I know they're telling me that that's okay for me to do but I still feel like it's my responsibility because children often do feel responsible for their parents it is what it is so I do feel like parents take advantage and, and honestly on some level don't realize that you cannot make an agreement with a child because the child doesn't have a choice in whatever agreement you think y'all are making. And there is an understanding and an agreement that takes place whenever you force children into situations that place them on the outside looking in, meaning that every other kid has a certain type of lifestyle. If this child doesn't have that same lifestyle, they're going to feel a loss and you're going to have to explain that. And when you explain that, you know what I'm saying? It, it's hard for it to not sound selfish as far as I'm concerned about why a child is, you know, not having the child life that they should be having, which should be more selfish. Like children should be able to be more selfish. And it's really not a, a selfless act to 
work in the entertainment industry for your parents to have a nice lifestyle. Um, and it's something to be said about what's going on on the internet these days, y'all. On the internet these days, and the way people like to um, use their children on social media to make money, that's another thing. You know, that's why they had to put the child labor laws on YouTube. You got to make sure you're not out here, you know, got your child on here for hours and hours and hours on camera playing with toys and shit so you can be raking up money, girl. What is going on? Like having children for housing. Essentially, it happens way too much. Who has children for housing? <laughs> Like, who was out here? Who was out here like that? I feel like that's not how that happened, y'all. I feel like people already be having children and then be like, oh, wait, so I can make more money. You know, I can get more money if I have another child. That might be the case. But y'all, that first kid is not for a place to live. <laughs> you probably got kicked out because of that damn kid. Anyway, y'all, let's move on. Let's move on, girl. Let's move on. Uh, okay, so here's our girl, Eva. Eva is going to talk to us about her dramatic weight loss because I have been trying not to say anything because y'all I don't I don't like to I don't like to speak on people's um bodies like that you know I have my petty moments of course you know what I'm saying if I don't like you deeply like how I feel about Giselle you know I might talk about your neck or something but essentially I don't like to talk about people's bodies but it it's bothersome to me sometimes when we see people that are like terribly thin you know because it's like what's going on you know what I mean like it's just I, I feel like more out of care than out of like messy shit but I've been noticing for a while that Eva's been looking less, you know, just less, just way less. She's going to talk about it. Saw the post over the summer when you were on the red carpet, mm -hmm. you did an event and you posted a picture and everyone, not everyone, people mm -hmm. started to go into your social media and uh, comment on your weight, mm -hmm. on your slim figure. Mm -hmm. You disabled your comments. I did. Which I think is healthy. Yes. And it made me think about your Wednesday meditations and yeah. your mindfulness because you you always talk about keeping the negativity out, keeping the, those comments out. You clearly saw those comments. Oh, absolutely. But where do you put them, right? right? Where do you, the negative feelings, the the things that are not good, where do you put them? You try to bury them down in your person and all that ends up doing Did is you expect those? I mean, do you, when you saw the picture of yourself, did you think I look slimmer than I normally? <laughs> I thought I looked cute. <laughs> I thought you were cute. <laughs> now, Tamron, look, I came here to be transparent, yes, like honest. I went through a divorce last year. Yeah. Anyone that's ever been through a divorce knows that divorce is hard. It's like the stomach flu. Like you will be skinny afterward. Mm -hmm. You drop a 200 pound person, you're going to drop at least 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. So for me, I lost weight just naturally going through life and I found myself depressed um, before my divorce, through my divorce, trying to just navigate and rediscover who am I? I'm not the wife anymore, not someone's someone, I'm someone's mom. But if I took the mom away, if I took madam away, if I took top model away, like who's Eva? Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. And making sure that I prioritized knowing that character yeah. and building that character. <laughs> Okay, so Eva basically says she was depressed from her divorce, and that's why she lost so much weight. I do believe that. I feel like she's speaking on it because it's been, you know, obviously said a lot lately. But I also feel um, as long as she is healthy, that's what the most important thing is in this situation. But, you know, at least now she finally spoke on it. Yeah, no, not everybody will lose weight. Some people gain weight, you know what I mean? But um, there have been times myself personally where I have been going through something with a person and will literally lose weight out of depression because I don't have an appetite and can't eat. So, I mean, shit, not even just going through relationship shit. After Katrina, um, after Katrina happened and we moved to Baton Rouge, there was a culture shock the depression of losing everything. And I was also in an abusive relationship. I think I lost 20 pounds. I went from about 125 to about 105, 110 around there, which honestly, even at 5'3 is not a good weight for me. Y'all, at, at, listen, as much as I work out, if y'all follow me, y'all know I work out quite a bit. 
And I really don't even have an appetite most of the time. Right now, I'm drinking an energy supplement and fat burner from JustMoveSupplements.com. Girl, get some. Link in the the bio. Help you get through your workout. Help you get through your day. Y'all see how I'm going up in this. I'm about to go work out right after this. Okay? But, like, I don't eat a lot during the first half of the day. And still, at a healthy weight, I am about 145 at, at a 145, 160, depending on like where I'm at with my muscles and, and, you know, my weight fluctuating. I'm between 145 and 160. That's a healthy weight for me at 5'3". So please imagine me being 105, 110, which I have never been since I became a teenager. So, yeah, like it, it, it happens. And it's not always a good look, y'all. I, my, my neck was all skinny and shit. Like, there's literally a picture of me, and I'm like, oh, your neck is too skinny. Like, my clothes are falling off of me in the picture because I'm that small. And my dad, who never, who made it a point as a man to never comment on my body, never say anything about my weight. This was the first and only time my dad ever said anything in reference to my body. And he basically said, I was trying not to say nothing, but your clothes are falling off you. I don't, you need to get that together. Now that's the, that's the way your parents handle you back in the day when you're going through something, you need to get that together. Like motherfucker, get me some therapy. (laughs) What is going on? No, no, you got to wait till you go to college and then you start getting you some damn therapy. But I hope that Eva is okay. I hope that she's not deep diving into a dark place because girl, sometimes I feel like her playing that role of madam may actually be affecting her as a person. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, y'all, that was Eva, girl. Let's go on here. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Wrong one. Let's go ahead and press on to the next topic. All right. So, B. Simone, girl. Listen, if B. Simone not going to do nothing, she going to make waves every six months. Okay? Whether it's getting y'all mad because she was charging people for her uh, close friends. um, Y'all getting mad at her because she said she don't want a man that work a nine to five. Um which I totally understand, you know, if you're a person whose schedule is free and you really want to be able to spend time with a person, you need them to be able to have somewhat of a free schedule, especially if you don't live with the person, you know what I'm saying? Um, So I totally understand where she's coming from with that now that I've gotten older and I live a lifestyle where I basically dictate my own schedule. You do kind of want to, you know, be around and hang with people that can, you know, have more leisure time. I get it. You know what I mean? But anyway, she's always upsetting you guys. Y'all know her and her friend used to have a podcast, okay? And now she's starting her own solo podcast and social media users believe B. Simone seemingly shades her former best friend. Girl, let me tell y'all, anytime people are like shading each other online and their friends, I believe they're in cahoots. Let's, let's see. I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. All right, I love you too. We're good. Talent flying in. Thank you. Hey, good to see you. Wait on set. Come on, cool in heels. Hold on. Wait, what's going on with this? Sound speed. Never speeding. Action. Let's try this again. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Nah, that was good, y'all. That was, listen, my natural reaction, I had not seen that. <laughs> Be so bold, bitch. Why are you like this? <laughs> girl, I'm sorry. Hilarious. Hilarious. Do you hear me, girl? Where, where's it at? <laughs> Listen, create, honey, create. <laughs> what? Listen, I I loved it. Listen, I love the long ass walk in with. The, oh, how you doing, honey? All right, them putting no the makeup on her, the heels, the suit. Okay, the crop top. The like, bitch, she looked like me. Okay, look. Back when I used to have my short blonde hair, the bitch looked like me. Okay, I like the look. I was here for the suit of it all, girl. You know, because we're grown now. We're grown. You know what I'm saying? I loved it. Okay, I love. Like, I feel like I have bought so much slacks. Listen, 
I'm going to do a live on my Relax With Blue channel. So make sure y'all follow my other YouTube channel, Relax With Blue, because I'm about to start doing my lifestyle content on there. And I got a huge haul from Shein, because y'all know I shop at Shein. <laughs> and you can fill in the rest, girl. Um, But I'm going to do like a little try-on haul on live with you guys. I'm probably going to uh, do that tomorrow, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, fit it in. But girl, listen... <laughs> Let's try this again. Girl, that's shade. That is shade. That is shade. It wasn't working with her. She wasn't doing it right. Let me try to do this shit by myself because it might be better with me by myself than it was when I was with her. Like, no. What is this? What is this? Get this away. <laughs> girl, girl, it was the, what is this? Mm -mm. No, get this away. <laughs> What's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. Wait, what's going on with this? <laughs> Sound speed. Never speed. Action. Let's try this again. I'm here for it. Let's try this again. I'm here for it. I am here for it. <laughs> now, I'm not here for shaming your friend like that, bitch. But I also feel like mm -hmm, I don't know their situation. I can't be that. I'm just not going to be that mad about it, girl. But that shit is hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bitch, that was a giggle and a cackle for me. Okay. Now, listen, y'all, quick little break. Before we take the break, remind everybody, tonight, 8 p.m. Central Time, Ooh, Ladies First panel will be on Nisi Dixon's channel. Ooh, Ladies First, Ladies First. Make sure y'all come through. All right. Also, don't forget, y'all, the Phuket Thailand trip, June 13th to the 20th is coming up, y'all. ResetByDesignWellness.com to go and sign up. I think we might have uh, three or four more beds left between there. Either way, y'all, it's going to be transformative. It's going to be a great trip. It's going to be on some relaxation, some relating, and bitch, hopefully some releasing and resetting as well, okay? So go to Reset by Design Wellness on Instagram, follow them, and also go to the website to sign up if you are interested. Details are on Instagram and on the website. So there is that. Now, before we get back into everything, I need y'all to like a video. Okay, y'all, hold up. I, I want to see. I want to make sure that I I covered. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. All right, that was that was a a mistake. Okay, so let's move on, you guys. <laughs> I hope y'all like the video. I hope y'all subscribe to the channel. I hope y'all are sharing me and supporting me. Okay, if you like the content, don't don't be trying to play me like a soybean burger bitch sitting in the background stalking me. Like the video. Like the video. Like the video. Share the video. Okay, it's free. I don't understand what the problem is. Y'all know how YouTube be doing me for whatever reason. But, you know, it would be really, really nice if y'all would like the video because it let other people know that I'm on live. You know what I'm saying? Let them know to come in that I am entertaining the people. Okay? Listen. Anyway. Girl, I told y'all I wasn't really trying to get back into the whole Holly DDG situation because I just saw them last week with him buying her shit every, every other day. They was on the internet. Oh. Girl, I loved it. It was so cute, but I was just like, mm -hmm. sister, you've been on my mind. Oh, sister, with two of a kind soul, sister. I'm keeping my eyes on you. I bet you think I don't know nothing but singing the blues. Oh, sister, have I got news for you? I'm something. I hope you think that you're something too. Okay. 
I had to sing it all the way to that point. <clears throat> Because as I said before, and I'm going to say it again and again, <laughs> shout out to the Brooke Ashley, okay? I'm going to say it again and again, okay? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. She be putting them clips in and I be dying. Shout out to the Brooke Ashley. So I'm going to say it again and again. Whenever people show you two opposing things, pay attention. Something's cap. Somewhere in there. <clears throat> Oh, the sun came out. Cap. I don't know where, but somewhere. And what? Well, let me explain. Let me explain. Two different things. Haley doesn't want to show y'all the pregnancy. DDG keeps accidentally posting shit to show y'all the pregnancy. That's some conflicting shit about something very serious. I've said it before. I'll say it again. That was problematic to me. Then you have this very, very young woman getting online and doing the I'm mad at the internet in order to deflect from the fact that I got mess going on in my life type shit. A lot of us adult grown ass women, you know, we see it, we understand it. You know what I mean? Then she got pregnant. You know what I'm saying? After all of the Ruby Rose back and forth, she got pregnant. The baby came. She lied about it for whatever reason. You know what I mean? I feel like that was more of a, I wanted to keep my shit on the low and he kept putting it out there, which makes people keep coming to me, asking me about it, even though I don't want to comment on it for whatever contractual reason she may have not want to spoke on it. Y'all listen. And then the song he came out with jealousy over her kissing Eric in the little mermaid as if he did not know she was an actress when he got with her. Now we didn't find out she got another gig that she just signed on with recently. Okay. And we're rehashing this old Ruby Rose shit on top of the fact that it looked like they may have unfollowed each other on Instagram and deleted each other from their respective Instagrams for the most part. Okay. Now I did still see a picture, but it was more so, you know, like DDG baby daddy, less as DDG, you know, my man's, my man's, my man's. And we knew it was only going to be a matter of time. We told her through the internet, we was like, girl, as soon as you had that baby, he is going to get difficult. Because that's what happens with all of these young men. They pump fake like they want this. And then when it all comes down to it, it's hard. And then you get your face cracked because everybody was telling you, girl, be real. Be real with yourself. Prepare your insides. <laughs> prepare your insights and you're like it's me and him Winnie and Bobby and we're like okay <laughs> okay 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 and now it seems as if the chickens have come home to roost and I'm not happy about it or anything please don't get me wrong because I don't give a fuck but I just want y'all to see how when we be telling y'all stuff and y'all want to call bitches haters and y'all want to call, you know, bitches bitter and all of this. But everybody's just telling you, oh, girl, that's a red flag. Be careful. I've seen that before. I know how that feels. Be careful. Oh, another red flag. Haley, girl, <laughs> you know, we want you to win. You know what I'm saying? I want you to win. And, uh, and now it seems as if all of the shit has come to fruition. And, you know, we don't know because they, they might be going back and forth, y'all. They're young. They just had a baby. It's given they might be going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And they might end up together. Do I feel like they're going to be together forever, girl? No. <laughs> girl, no. <laughs> and that's not no shade to them. I don't think most people are going to be together forever until they get to a certain age range. Once y'all in y'all like 40s or 50s, and it still might be a toss-up. It still might be a toss-up. But people in their 20s staying together, no. No. I, I never really think that that's going to, that, that's not, you know, I, I, I just don't. I just don't. So Ruby Rose posted this is why i'm single okay and this was you know some text messages between ddg and her he was like you still in la she was like yeah <clears throat> she said uh what you on getting ready how about you you hitting me the day y'all argue is so you you right let me go heal first even laughing about it like <laughs> and and this is what he said this is what he said on black and the song is when um like it was like a screenshot that she posted to me, DMing her. Okay. Um, and you were dating uh, Holly at the time. Yeah, but we was like going through a really, really, really rough patch, and I it was kind of. Yeah, yeah, so I was just like, you know, being a dick. 
you know, petty, you know, <clears throat> type shit. But I had no intention. Like, I did it in front of her. I had no intentions of actually linking with Ruki, you know? Yeah. She's seen it. Like, imagine you arguing with your girl or whatever, right? Yeah. And, you know, you get mad at her for something that, you know, you know, you, you're mad, right? You're like, all right, I'm, since you, you know what I'm saying, I'm finna do this, watch this type shit. You know what I mean? That I'm talking about in the song is when. And, that, and this is the thing. <clears throat> this is the thing. Everybody's young. Everybody, you know, nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? We love to say that shit. But essentially, you could not be perfect. And also when people showcase being this petty with you, it's just not a good sign that they're going to handle you with care at the moments where you need it the most. Because what will be more important to them is them being petty and seeking revenge on you. <clears throat> so, yeah, a lot of us were like, Haley, girl, protect yourself. Don't go so hard on your fans for this nigga because you're going to need your fans when this nigga isn't there anymore. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do understand just because people are on the internet on your live, it doesn't mean that they're your fans, okay? But, you know, her Instagram has, you know, I don't see, like, he's in this little thread. And I'm like, I'm sure she didn't want to delete this thread because it's a lot of her and the baby, you know what I'm saying? And her looking good after having a baby and stuff like that. You know, like, girl, the bounce back is amazing, you know? But we don't see any more of him. And I feel like it's giving intentional. It's giving intentional. I'm not going to his Instagram because I don't care. But um, yeah, girl, we don't see him nowhere. And, and I, girl, let's see. Do they do they still follow each other? Let's see. Hold up, following. Hold up, wait, no, 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 following. Um, let's see. D D. Oh wait, hold up. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. It said no results. It said no results, y'all. And honestly, I'm wondering, did she unfollow his mama? Because I thought that she was still following his mama and his mama should say DDG mama. Girl, I don't know. I don't know, y'all, but I just, I just want y'all to use these young women, you know, use them as examples of, you know, what you should look out for. Because it happens to us all, but you could learn from other people's mistakes. You don't always have to go through the same pains and, you know, make the same mistakes that everybody else makes. If you can learn from them, <clears throat> learn from them. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I want. That's all I want for everybody. Learn from other people's mistakes. Learn from your own mistakes so that you don't keep putting yourself in misery. But having a baby for someone that is jealous of you, that will sabotage you, um, that, you know what I mean? Like that, that's just not a good thing. It, it's just not, it's good to have a baby. And I believe that women are just going to have babies. I think it's weird when we like get mad and shame women for having babies. Women are going to have babies, but please make sure that you, you know, curtail your expectations for what you can have in this life with certain people when they're not at the level that they need to be. Not saying that DDG will never get there, but this level of immaturity is not a good sign to me. That's all. That's all. Um, and, and also this, also this, she's a butthole like him and thought she wouldn't be dogged out because she's different. I'm not going to lie. I don't think she thought she wasn't going to be dogged out because she was getting dogged out from before she had the baby for him. But I do feel like she has some asshole tendencies to herself, which is why she's attracted to him. But let's move on to other assholes. Okay. Y'all they saying JLo is out here being an asshole. And listen, this is not surprising to any of us that have been here since the nineties. Because, girl, the way <clears throat> Rosie Perez and, and everybody else that was, you know, really doing some shit back in the gap, they will tell you J-Lo is a heifer. <laughs> okay, a old mean ass, thieving ass heifer. That's what they say about it, y'all. But let's listen to what this popular choreographer, okay, choreography, shout out to Jocelyn Hernandez, had to say. Um, Let's see, popular... Dexter Carr. Okay, Dexter Carr. What do you have to say? I have a J-Lo story. Tell the year is 2019, and I'm dancing with Jennifer Lopez in the 2019 Grammys. And she was asked to do the Motown tribute, and she said yes. As we all know, Motown is a record label, is Black-owned, a home to 
the most iconic artists in history, Diana Ross, the Supremes, uh, The Temptations. Like, come on now, we know what's going on. Mm. I had worked with her previously before. I did a music video of her, a couple performances, I think Billboard Awards, some other stuff too, which, you know. I, 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 it, it was cool, whatever. I was just very shocked that she was going to do a Motown tribute at the Grammys, which is a award show for music. I walk into rehearsal on the first day. Here was the first red flag for me. I walk into rehearsal the first day to the Motown tribute rehearsal. There was only three Black people, including myself. Everybody else in the room was white or other. It's giving whitewashing of history. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. And I specifically remember when it's happened because that's when I threw my hands up because it made me want to holler um, when it comes to um, Smokey Robinson. This is when you realize light skin, light eyes niggas are colorist and a lot of the times are betrayers to their own people. Meanwhile, um, being able to stand on their people's backs. OK, because that's a, a lot of the Motown, like everybody in Motown really got on during that time because it's a black. It was a black music label at a time when there weren't any music labels for black people. Black people were being kept out of music a lot. That's why they had to you know, over cleanse and whitewash the image of the first acts on Motown. You know what I'm saying? Your Supremes and, and even, even your boy, uh, 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 Smokey Robinson and, and, you know, whoever the fuck they were, you know, cause he had a group. I remember feeling like out of all the people, JLo is not the person that should do a Motown tribute. She's not enough of a vocalist. She's not black. Nothing about Motown gives Las Vegas showgirl. And J-Lo gives Las Vegas showgirl. And nothing about Motown is Las Vegas showgirl. And what I mean by that is Las Vegas girls are throwing legs up and dancing. Motown was never that. The most you was going to get with a little, you know, a little shimmy and a one-two bop. But you weren't going to get any real choreography from a Motown performance. It was more about the singing and the song quality. So it's very annoying to me back then to hear uh, uh, Smokey Robinson tell us that Motown was about inclusivity of everyone, not just black people. That's fucking cap because there was nobody else around for the most part besides black people. Black people and white people during the 50s and 60s, that's the like those are the two main groups of people that were living here. Yeah, there were other ethnicities of people, but please understand that those came in over time and they were also sanctioned off to their own areas. The, 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 the mixing that was going on was between black people and white people. So who the fuck else was Motown supposed to be made for in, in the 50s and the 60s? Smokey Robinson? I don't know, but he upset me. I'm sorry. I'm gonna let this young man get back to his story, but I'm I, the, all of that aggravation just came back up for me when he was talking about this, and then talking about how he was one of three black people involved, and we knew the shit looked stupid when we like we knew that shit was stupid when it first happened, and we had to have one of the people who was so um you know such a huge figure in Motown history, smoking Rob Smokey Robinson, not only being a performer but also being a writer and a producer of other people's songs so it's you know in creating the Motown sound so for him to come out and say such a thing it was really to me a slap in the face of the black people that still should have been getting a job that day versus J-Lo and the multicultural ambiguity y'all want to act represented Motown at its infancy girl stop you know Hispanic but there was three black people in the room and that was the dancers Okay, we're, we move on, we press on. I'm noticing that even when we're doing formations, like we're, we're being placed on stage, I'm talking about us as far as the black dancers, we're being pushed away from the center, which is where she is. I remember this, like I really remember this moment. It was me and the other black dancer that were opposites. We were right, it was her in the middle and then it was us two. She said, they have to move, they have to move. Okay, we move past that. We move past that, right? We move past that. We probably now into like the third or fourth day of rehearsal, right? And that article came out saying, you know, why is J Lo doing the Motown tribute? Like, I don't know if y'all remember that, but an article came out saying, I think it was like Variety, but somebody, something big, a publication came out asking why she's doing it. The, the team sat us down and they were like, I know you guys are seeing some negative press and blah blah blah. Chash, she gonna walk in and tell us. Y'all know what? We're gonna show him why I'm doing it. I remember she like raised her. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. 
I was dying. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. I was so, so confused. Press on. That day of rehearsal was like actually easier. So like, I was just like chilling. At this point, y'all, I'm here. I'm doing my job. That's what I'm doing. Break for lunch, right? My hair at that time looked like this. So I'm there with the choreographer at lunch. We're all talking. I think Jennifer's there. She's talking to us too, actually kind of being funny or whatever. And literally looks at me dead in my face. She goes, so what are we going to do with your hair? Oh, yeah, girl, I get it. Listen, I get it. Is my hair Motown? No. Ain't nothing about this performance Motown. Ain't no Mo, ain't no town in here. Hi, I just want to take a brief intermission from the story to remind everybody that there was a salsa breakdown. A salsa breakdown. But you worried about my braids. Also, I want to be very honest. Like, let's be clear. I was, it was 2019. I was really in my professional dancer bag. I was trying to dance behind artists and do the things. So I'm happy that that happened when it did, because if it was 2024. Oh, wow. I went to my friend who's a hairstylist. Shout out to Tiger Bomb. He's the best hairstylist in the world. I love him so much. He basically gave me like a custom, like, Motown look because I was so scared. I was like, I'm going to get fired. Like, I don't know what to do. So Tiger ends up giving me this look which I ended up loving, so shout out to Tiger. Oh, what really okay. gagged me is I'm over here thinking like everybody's gonna be doing like a Motown, like a vibe, like, uh, but again, I'm, I remember what I said, there's only three black people. So I'm trying to think, what's everybody else gonna do? Child, look at what they was doing. What? And what really sucks is like the black dancers that were on the job were like phenomenal. Like, I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all, white and other females like she was whooping ass like eating those steps pushed out pushed to the side push push push, push. honestly it was a line she was all the way at the end and i remember sitting on the side and being like wow but not only like forget the fact that she's black she's eating and let's not forget the fact that she's black it's a motel tribute so yeah, child, that's the last time Yenny from the block got any of my time, my energy, and, you know, ham and cheese on a roll with a bag of chips and an orange drink, if you know, you know. Uh, I have a J-Lo story. But you're uh, child, I am taken aback at her saying, what, what are we going to do with your hair? Like, and I didn't think it was that bad as to, like, push the Black performers away from her and into the darkness. Because, you know, a certain, there are certain, like, spots on stage that are not lit as well. You know, the spot closest to the performer is where you are most seen, most well lit. So pushing the, the other dancers, the darker skinned black dancers out to the sides, into the back, is to push them out of the spotlight in a fucking Motown tribute. Girl... I feel like I feel like J Lo must have hunched somebody back in the day for that performance. Like something, it had to be an exchange of hands. Like something, something had to, you know, an exchange of something. There, there had to be an exchange, a transactional situation for why, why this took place. And I've heard like various messed up stories about J Lo for years, which is why I've never been that big of a fan of hers. Like I like her. I like, I like how she dresses. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, she can give you a good performance. I kind of like forgot my dislike for her and kind of started to like her again as of recent. And now I just feel like I'm back to not liking your ass again. Like, thanks for disappointing us, J-Lo, with the colorism and the racism. Thank you. We appreciate you reminding us who you are, girl. And I'm sitting here scrolling for dear life on Real with Yanni's page because I thought that I remembered her posting a video of the lady talking about Jenny and her curly hair, but that's okay, girl. I already told y'all. <laughs> I already told y'all what happened, okay? But anyway, let's go ahead and move on. We have to get to Caitlyn Jenner. Girl, y'all know I have no respect, right? Y'all, I don't know if y'all know, but I don't like Caitlyn Jenner and I don't protect pretend to. I think it's weird as fuck for you to call yourself trans and then like actively as a person in the mainstream media, like a well-respected person, a white man, you have a lot of power. And instead of using your power to help um, other trans people, you actively vocalize anti-trans rhetoric. And I just, I don't see it. I don't like I'm no longer calling Caitlyn Caitlyn. Like it's definitely giving Bruce from now on. And I, I remember I lost a follower, uh, a trans girl stopped following me because I said I refuse to like really respect Caitlyn Jenner's uh, 
trans identity because I felt like it's giving old white men in drag. That's what I think. I think it's giving old white men in drag playing dress up, not really having that identity. And I stood on business then and I stand on business now because essentially, if you really did feel like a trans woman is who you are and your identity, why the fuck do you advocate against your own self-interest? Why would you do that? You know why? Because you feel safe in the fact that you are really a white man in drag. Really. And you feel safety in that. You know, you can always go back to your money and your safety and being a white man. You can take a wig off, take the fake titties off. You can do it and, and then be right back to being a white man. And your alliance and, and you know, uh, uh, cuddling up to Trump, you know, all the time, always getting online to make sure you're co-signing whatever ignorant shit Donald Trump is saying on the Internet shows me you want that fandom and that mania and um, that cult like following. You want them to support you. You want them to be behind you, which is crazy because these are the same people that are anti trans. <laughs> Girl, y'all so fucking confused. It's insane. But. OK, um, O.J. Simpson passed away today and Caitlyn Jenner tweeted good riddance. And I'm going to tell y'all, this is one of the times me and Caitlyn go agree. <laughs> Shall me and Bruce agree. Y'all are not about to make um, y'all are not about to make O.J. Simpson. Um, but. Yeah, benevolent. Y'all are not going to make him benevolent because he died. Y'all are not going to do that. Um, yeah. Not, not poor Chloe. Y'all good. <laughs> Girl, I can't stand y'all. Oh, my God. How black people felt about the criminal justice and wrongfully convicted and targeting poor and middle class black men. And how they really felt about O.J. Simpson at the same time. Did that shit. Guilty as fuck. <laughs> he guilty. He did that shit. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my God. No, this is everybody, you know, telling a story about what really happened. Um, from cancer. And, you know, it was like a brutal, like, the O.J. Simpson trial, y'all, it was a brutal murder. And a lot of Black people saw it as, like, some type of karmic situation like you know white people have gotten away with harming us so much that it's only right that at least one black person get away with harming a white person <laughs> that's how a lot of people felt and that's fucked up because essentially i feel like you shouldn't feel good about it no way shape or form like nobody should have felt good about him getting away with that shit because essentially what did he what did he then tell y'all not black i'm oj <laughs> okay Nigga is not black. He's okay. That you will not ask me another question about the case. I will never ask you again. We won't have to talk about it anymore. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Nope. Did not do it. After we finished filming, OJ said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. <laughs> if you promise, if you promise, <laughs> that you will not ask me another question about the case. I will never ask you again. We won't have to talk about it anymore. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Nope. Did not do it. After we finished filming, OJ again. said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. He did that shit. Guilty as fuck. <laughs> okay. Okay. So do we see? Like, listen. Every dog has their day. Well, <laughs> let's move on. Oh my God. Okay, y'all. Just so y'all know, um, after this, we're gonna take a quick break and then we have two more topics. Love and marriage Huntsville and Ray J. And then I'm getting out of here, girl. Okay, because I have got to go to the gym. But let's go ahead and get into what K Michelle had to say under all this filter. You want me into private because then I don't feel protected. For my last ex in private. You like it? I would like to be better about that, you know? Like I, I don't want to see. 
No, no. Oh, mine don't cry though. No. I think they should be able to be vulnerable. I do. I think men should be able to cry and be vulnerable. Yeah. But for some reason, once they cry, you know what happens to me? I turn into the man. No. When they cry, I'll be like, <laughs> like that, like. <laughs> Oh, they about. So if they had a death in their family, if their mom, cry, if their mom not, passed, I get it. Fast. Oh, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. but I'm talking about like some don't go their way, like a cry. Oh no, 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 no. no. But like if someone dies in your family and they things like that, what if they have a bad? No. And you know, like having a bad, like I just don't be want men to cry because then I don't feel protected. Okay. So y'all heard what she said, right? She said if she see her man cry. With the exclusion of a family member dying. That's the only reason a nigga can cry. <laughs> I would just say, I think that it is your responsibility to unwrap your mind from that and to not respond in that manner. So I'm going to tell y'all, I can remember my dad crying once, once for real, for real. I've only seen my dad cry one time time and it was the it was christmas at our house and my mom's dad uh my grandfather could not breathe and my dad performed cpr on him and they took him to the hospital right you would think this would have fucked up christmas but it didn't <laughs> um because my, my grandfather died after that i was six years old my grandfather was one of my favorite people okay shout out to edward montana and the new orleans montanas okay but either way, y'all, my dad, after they took my grandfather to the hospital, my dad was sitting on the bed and he was boohoo crying. And I don't think I have ever, and I'm not boohoo crying because, you know, he couldn't be a boohoo cry, but like just, just sitting there and quietly tears just running down his face. My grandfather was really like an amazing person, like very like the energy my grandfather had, you just don't meet a lot of men with that type of energy. Right. So my dad was greatly, you know what I'm saying, like influenced by the connection, right? So when he died, which was only like a couple of years after my dad's own dad died, I think it re-traumatized him. And that was the only time I ever seen him cry. And seeing him cry that one time, that one time watching my dad cry was enough for me to know that men need to cry and that I probably wouldn't have gotten hit as much if <laughs> I wouldn't have got hit as much if he would have figured out his emotions a little bit better. I think that y'all look at one side of it and don't look at the other side of it. I do understand what she means. Don't nobody want no crying ass person, period. Like, I don't want any adult that's going to cry simply because they didn't get their way that day. You know what I'm saying? No. But essentially, when we go through difficult times, shit just need to come out. And nobody should feel like they have to hold it in for your benefit. Um, at the end of the day, my dad cried sometimes and still would go pick up a gun and walk around the corner and threaten to shoot somebody's dog for attacking me. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like those two things don't really go together all the time. And a lot of times men that are overly emotional can be overly volatile. You can be overly protected, bitch. Okay. That's probably how you ended up with men pits, right? Being with somebody who you felt like was showing, you know, the adequate amount of angry emotion versus showing sad emotion. Not understanding that a lot of the times because of the way y'all view black men, y'all don't let black men do anything. We was talking about the nail polish. There were so many of y'all. Oh, my God. What is she talking about? A man wearing nail polish, bitch. You don't know him and you don't have the possibility of fucking him. So why are you this bothered? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. I feel like y'all have got to stop feeling like every man out here is an option for you to marry. Stop it. Men should be able to be however they feel necessary when it comes to expressing themselves emotion wise. And that may mean that that's not the nigga for you because you still in a toxic place where you can't accept a man being a human and having emotions just like you do. And the fact that he doesn't feel safe to have those emotions is the reason why you probably got knocked over your fucking head. And that's no disrespect, but that's the connection. That's the connection. Girl, uh, little, uh, was it little baby? Little baby had on some nail polish. Academics lost his, his goddamn mind. Like, <laughs> even though the nail polish matched his jewelry, it was like, I don't even understand what's going on. It's matching the diamonds. W where is the confusion? Um, Because, you know, y'all... <laughs> 
girl, if he is gay, what what difference does it matter? What difference does it make? Who going to fuck him? Still going to fuck him because he's a little baby. And now what? Like, now what? Now what? Like, what's going to happen now? Um, so I just feel like her reasoning is toxic. And at a, as a grown woman with a boy child, for you to still feel that way, that shows a lack of growth on your part. And I feel like you need to go to therapy and deal with that because a man should be able to cry and you should not feel like that's a weakness. Like, that's insane. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Sounds like he needs a history lesson. Yes, because most things like high heel shoes, wigs, nail polish were all things that men created for themselves at one point before y'all decided to over masculinize the image of every man because oh my god if they're not rigidly fitting into this masculine thing my head is gonna explode that's how y'all be on the internet girl y'all be real mad y'all be real mad and then you know can't understand why why every nigga you in a relationship with is talking to you crazy and putting his hands on you and all of this shit because you don't value emotional intelligence you don't value people actually dealing with their feelings versus pushing them down until it comes out in the ass whipping on you you know what i'm saying and this is not really just directed towards her that's just the truth of the situation y'all um so i do think there's something to be said for not wanting someone to be overly emotional but i think that is extremely extremely uh fucked up in 2024 to persist with a mindset that men can't cry or they should not cry i don't know if y'all know but to me crying is like fighting i don't think you really have a choice in the matter i don't i don't think you really have a choice in the matter <clears throat> right rick james wore nail polish and he was still getting all the coochie Prince was out here with a curl, okay? A whole curl with assless chaps on and was getting all of the women. These, these things that y'all put together to mean one thing or another, like to me, it just kind of showcases how ignorant a lot of people are. Um, And that's sad. That's really sad that y'all are still in this, like, you know, every nigga needs to show up as James Evans, but with money type of vibe. <laughs> like, you know, scoot back, girl. Scoot back. OK, let, 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 let these men be who they are. And that's me talking to women. OK, specifically, because it's a whole different conversation when it comes to men and the way y'all bully and threaten to kill each other. If y'all don't, you know, stay within the confines of this weird ass uh, um, performance of masculinity that y'all think is, is so important. And please don't get me wrong. I like masculinity. Like I'm, I'm even down to the women that I'm attracted to. I'm more so attracted to masculine presenting women. OK. I got a big, tall, hairy nigga, okay? Like country, like that's, that's you know, you can't get no more masculine, okay? But emotional it's intelligence, I'm sorry. That's important. I need you to be able to tap into femininity emotionally and mentally. I do, I do. I don't want to be with an old weird ass hard ass, like no, you you could have that. No, thank you. I need you to be in touch with your, your emotions on some level because the niggas that don't be in touch with their emotions, girl, they'll fuck around and kill you one day. <laughs> mad holding shit in and now you know stab 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 anyway that's what i had to say we're gonna take a quick little break like the video up let youtube know y'all enjoying my content today as i help y'all get through y'all good thursday all right again don't forget tonight seven i'm sorry 8 p.m central time the old ladies first panel is back okay don't forget don't forget and also, let's not forget about Thailand that's coming up. If you want to sign up before we sell out, girl, you better sign up. Okay? Come on through to the luxury beachfront villa. I cannot wait. Okay? I can't wait to try the food. I can't wait to be in somebody's clear ass water. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my real locks out. So I ain't gotta worry about all of this, this, this fake hair shit. It'd be doing too much sometimes. But anyway, y'all like the video, support the channel. Do what you do. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, give it up. Anywhere you said, anywhere you said,
Okay. Hold up, y'all. Because I need y'all to hear me talk about this. Friendships and dating John Bodega, girl. And that's a good working black actor, girl. That's a good working. That's a good man, Savannah, girl. And he looked like he'll treat her much better than this fool. Like, Ray J might be smart at keeping that money coming in. But when I tell y'all, I feel like he is a menace to any woman with real emotions. Like, if you have feelings... This nigga's gonna step on him with his shoes, like like cigarette ashes on the floor. Recently, oh, he's been doing a lot of interviews. He was on Angela Yee's show, and they were talking about how him and Prink are getting a divorce, how Prink is dating. And can we discuss why it's so hard for people to understand that Prink and Princess would be the same thing? How slow do you have to be for y'all to be in the comments? Who is Prink? I'm literally pointing towards them. Her name is Princess. Prink is a shortened version of Princess. Short yellow bus people. <laughs> and also he mentioned how he has one of the kids and she has another one of the kids. And he said it's because, oh, his daughter don't like to miss school. She loves school. And I'm like, so the son is missing school? What's going on? Well, Prink on. then post a picture of her and her son saying, missing my baby boy. Haven't seen him in almost two weeks. And people in the comments are wondering, is Ray J keeping their son away from Prink because she's moving on like Maya? And I do feel that it could be a possibility that he could be using, you know, the kid against her because he's that type of dude. I don't know if anybody's paid attention, but he's the type of guy. Because OK, so I'm going to I'm going to stop right there for this one. OK, but I wanted to mention that. Because there are so many times when I be calling shit and nobody's listening to me. So y'all wait for somebody else to say the shit in order to act like somebody has said it on the internet. But this was me foreshadowing this shit. Okay. This was me using a bitch, you know, spidey senses. Okay. My, my extra shit that I be having going on. Okay. A lot of y'all that really watch me, y'all know I have extra shit that be going on. I be knowing. Right. I could be wrong, but I'm probably not. Okay. Ray J is reportedly seeking to have joint custody of his two kids that he shares with his ex-wife princess. And he is requesting that most of their assets be kept separate according to documents. Now I know a lot of y'all are going to think, oh, he wants joint custody. Before I continue to read this, he wants, he wants joint custody. He's a good dad, girl. He just want to make sure he have his kids too. And to y'all, I say this. Y'all think I'm wrong? Fuck off. You will never stop this train. We too up to be listening to what stupid gotta say. I'm free. I'm single. This is what single look like. Get used to it. Because this is just the start of it. You got a problem, get the f*** my pay. All you're going to see is and titties on my page, so suck my dick if you got a problem. Y'all think I'm wrong? Fuck off. Okay. So, so that was me, maybe like a week or so ago, talking about Ray J and what he had to say to people that felt like he was out here living raw. Okay? So that's the man who y'all think is a good father and wants joint custody of his children. Y'all think that he should have joint custody of those kids talking and acting like that. According to the report, singer reality star took the time to respond to Princess Love's divorce filing and stated that he wants joint legal and physical custody of their children, five-year-old Melody and four-year-old Epic. Court documents also revealed that Ray requested that he and Love split several of their assets, including miscellaneous jewelry and other personal effects. And the singer's earnings since their date of separation, which was also listed as to be determined. The document added there are additional separate property assets and obligations of the parties, the exact nature and extent of which are not present are not presently known. So what that sounds like to me is if Prink does not handle the custody situation the way Ray J wants her to handle it. Or if she doesn't want to give him whatever he wants that she may want, he is going to fight her own custody. That's what it's given to me, using the kids to basically blackmail her into getting her to take what you want her to have versus what she may want to take from the marriage. Um, leaving things presently unknown and to be determined and, and, you know, that type of shit. That's what that makes me feel like. But anyway, 
As previously shared in February, Love shared a statement to her Instagram and shock fans by saying she and Ray J were calling it quits once again. Okay, she did all of that. But main thing for me, main thing for me was her saying that she missed her son and she had not seen her son in two weeks. And now you're filing for joint custody so that basically you can have them. Um, but Y'all think I'm wrong? Fuck off. You're, you're living like you will never stop this train. We too up to be blitzing away. Stupid gotta say. I'm free. I'm single. This is what single look like. Get used to it. Cause this is just the start of it. You got a problem, get the f my pay. All you're gonna see is and titties on my pay. So suck my dick if you got a problem. And and he wants joint custody. To me, it sounds like a tactic to control princess after they've divorced um a lot of men i think like to control the women through the children and i think him having partial custody in that way is a way to yeah i think it's a way for him to hurt prank by having joint custody because really you know Really, prank need to take them fucking kids and you need to come as you have time. That's what I feel. Um, Because it, it doesn't feel like he really wants to have the kids all the time. It don't feel like he want one week on, one week off. That's not what it feel like to me. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't feel like that. It feels like even when they were together, he would just up and leave and be, you know, in Los Angeles or be in Vegas. Anywhere she wasn't, he would just up and leave and be gone and leave her to take care of the kids on her own. And now you're asking for joint custody? Like... It just kind of feel like a way to hurt her. That's what it felt like to me. But it's to be determined. But after he, you know, did what he did with Zeus Network, it's definitely giving you like to seek vengeance on people that don't do what you want them to do, Ray J. You know? Mm. Well, y'all, that's all I got for y'all. That's all I got for y'all today. I hope y'all enjoyed the show, y'all. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Come back. If you want a real ass opinion on the shit that goes down on the internet, girl, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you support your girl and make sure you come back next time. See y'all later.